Well, we have yet another example of a major corporation, an oil giant in fact, that has shown the world it intends to play by the rules only when it suits them. Shocking, right? Well, it's not just in this country that lobbyists and I dare say even members of the judicial branch hold the power. Sometimes U.S. corporations take that power abroad. RT's Anastasia Cherkina takes a look at a major scandal that has dragged on for years and includes one of America's biggest oil giants. A U.S. oil giant and tribal communities in a small country in a legal death grip for almost two decades. It's considered to be one of the largest environmental disasters in the world on record. The defendant Chevron, the accuser and the victim of pollution South American Ecuador, a country tinier than the U.S. state of Nevada. Local tribes in these Amazon forests are battling for compensation for damage caused by Texaco, a company scooped up by Chevron. Billions of gallons of toxic waste dumped onto Ecuador's soil and waters causing... Over 1,400 people have died of cancer and thousands more have died of other illnesses. This year, an Ecuadorian court ruled that Chevron must pay nine and a half billion dollars in damages. Though it's a, certainly a large amount of money to you or me, this is actually something that uh, could certainly be absorbed by Chevron just as BP has been able to absorb the, the 20 billion or more uh, costs of practically destroying the Gulf of Mexico. But absorbing is what one New York judge chose not to do by stepping up for Chevron and blocking the Ecuadorian court's ruling from being enforced in the U.S. or worldwide. The judge cited harm to Chevron's business. That's just nonsense, is really what it is. So why would a New York judge meddle in a legal battle Chevron initially insisted take place in Ecuador? Obviously, it's a U.S. company. They have huge interests here. They're capable of uh, very severe pressure as well against, you know, those that wish in any way to harm their interests. And, of course, they have friends in a lot of high places. While Ecuador's tribal members certainly don't, says Greg Palast, investigative journalist and filmmaker. Greg says Chevron has been calling all the shots in the case. They said don't try the case in the United States, so they sent it down to Ecuador. Then they said don't now, we don't like the case in Ecuador because we got a bad ruling, so now try it in the United States. Now the multinational corporation is accusing Ecuadorian villagers and farmers of trying to rob the company's pockets. We have been seeing this fraud go on for the last 20 years. We continue to uncover it. We will continue to uh, pursue several options, both internationally and here in the U.S. courts. But legal experts cite double standards. Dumping toxic waste on American soil is a crime that no company would be allowed to get away with. Corporations don't want to ever be held accountable for their actions, and especially in other countries. Absolutely, there's a double standard. If Ecuador won the case, a legal precedent would be set. Chevron's and other oil giants' biggest nightmare. Because if they have to pay in Ecuador, they're going to have to pay in Mexico. They're going to have to pay in Nigeria. They're going to have to pay in Indonesia. Wherever they have gone and destroyed and despoiled the environment, they want to kill this right now so it never comes up again anywhere. The battle between the oil giant and Ecuador looks set to rage on for many more years. Years some may not have. Ecuador's defense team says as many as 10,000 more people could get cancer if the damages are not taken care of immediately. Anastasia Churkina, RT, New York. Well, this case has been looked on by other oil companies as a victory, a sign that money trumps, well, everything. But so many others around the world see this as a sick joke in which people from other countries are not only worth less than people in America, they're also worth less than the growing mountain of profit these companies keep making. Earlier I spoke with Han Shan. He's the coordinator of the Clean Up Ecuador campaign at Amazon Watch. He told me what's most concerning about this case involving Chevron. After nearly 18 years of litigation, a case that's been uh, litigated more than any case in history probably. I mean, we're talking uh, hundreds and of thousands of pages of documents, tens of thousands of samples that have been taken at sites that were operated by Texaco, which is uh, Chevron's predecessor company. After uh, all of this time, and now uh, a, a ruling from Ecuador's court after all this time, uh, Chevron is, is continuing just a, a scorched earth, legal, political, and, uh, and, and PR offensive to evade accountability while people in Ecuador continue to get sick.
people in Ecuador continue to die of oil-related illness, cancer. Uh, children there still don't have clean drinking water 18 years later. It's just uh, it, it's a travesty. And let's not forget, it was Chevron that asked for this case to be moved to Ecuador. Uh, perhaps they thought they could buy the people off or that it might benefit them. Obviously, uh, you know, the case did move to Ecuador and it still ruled against them. And as you mentioned, they're now on a, a PR blitz against what's happening there. One of their main arguments that I want you to respond to is that Chevron wasn't exactly responsible. It was the oil company Texaco, which Chevron later bought. Talk to me and tell well, our that, viewers why uh, this doesn't hold water. It's an argument that they've made in certain contexts, but they haven't made in other contexts. Because from a legal standpoint, they, they've been laughed out of court when they've tried to make this argument. For Chevron to say that they can take on all the assets that Texaco uh, represents, but not take on the liabilities which they were very well aware of when they purchased and, and absorbed the company is just ridiculous. My friend and colleague, Atosa Soltani from Amazon Watch, was actually at the 2001 Chevron annual shareholder meeting to basically warn the company of the kind of liability they were about to take on by absorbing Texaco. They knew very well, and the current CEO of Chevron, uh, John Watson, was in fact the, the, the guy who really uh, was, was the architect of the takeover of Texaco. So it, it's just a ludicrous argument. What about this uh, this judge in in New York? You know, the city where you are, uh, making stepping in and making this decision. How can this happen? Well, uh, it, it 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 is kind of mind-boggling, and and right now I think you know the case is is on appeal in Ecuador and and going through the the proper process. The the verdict that came down from Ecuador. Ecuadorian courts is a 188-page ruling that relied mostly on Chevron's own evidence on samples taken by the company uh, over the course of this, uh, you know, very long trial. And now we've got a, a New York judge in the same court that Chevron argued 10 years ago to, to get out of, uh, making this ruling that the, the judgment cannot be enforced. Uh, can't be enforced here in the U.S. He's uh, issued a preliminary injunction against that, uh, the verdict, uh, or against the enforcement of the verdict. Uh, but it's it's an extraordinary overreach, and I think an abuse of power by a judge. Basically, you know, the the the, the job of of deciding whether or not uh, a particular company or or even a sector of the economy deserves extraordinary legal protections is a matter for Congress, not for the courts. Um, you know, I, I think actually increasingly we're going to see Chevron shareholders telling management that it's time for them to put this uh, horrific controversy behind them and step up to the plate, take responsibility uh, for the devastation in Ecuador and, and, and pay up and actually provide some relief to the communities that have suffered so much to enrich the company. And that was Han Shan, coordinator of Clean Up Ecuador campaign at Amazon Watch. Thank <laughs> you.